Hello everybody, welcome back to Mantle Farm for another one of our weekly apiary updates with myself Josh and Roger. If you've got any questions or things you would like us to feature then pop them into the comments section below and we'll do our best to answer any questions and to feature any requests in future videos. So we it's a week on and here we are again. And here we are again. <laughs> right. That yes can be all good friends and yeah. jolly good company. Right. Pat. We had a lovely comment last week, Roger, saying that uh, somebody really enjoyed the watch. Yeah. Found it thoroughly enjoyable. Oh, well, that's good. It's nice, isn't it? Hmm. So we're doing something right. Oh, but wait, wait till I, wait till I miss a penalty. That'll all change. <laughs> uh, we were feeding these last week, weren't we? To yeah. get them to do stuff. I've seen the Queen already because she's marked. Yeah. She's there right there in the middle. There's in the centre, there's new brood and a couple of cells, a few mm. cells of eggs in. And tilt it this way a little bit, Roger. A see if I whole can. lot of nice bright yellow pollen, which I think might be from lime trees, which okay. are in flower at the moment. And the sort of darker stuff is probably from brambles that have just recently started oh this sort of grey yeah coming to flower in a big way um because our bees our honeybees tend to be a bit behind the curve when it comes to this sort of thing bumblebees will be on a new source in a, in a day mm. or two but our honeybees seem to think seem to take a, a little while to catch on that this new source is actually there available right so that's one frame with brood on this one has a big patch of of brood that is emerging it's been relayed in the middle there's a queen cup just above oh, the yeah. center of that i think that was there last week wasn't it uh, so i don't think nothing in it nothing in it um, it's just becoming a bad habit, that one. Mm. Uh, oh, some nice. Again, nice sort of Fresh. solid brood pattern around the outside with uh, new brood on the, in the middle. Mm. Nice white colour as well, they're healthy looking. Healthy looking larvae in the right position in the cells, and then this you have the sort of typical arc of pollen around the top with nectar in the corners yeah or syrup whichever mm. well they've got they're all right for well so at least they've right actually got some stores this time because that's why we fed them isn't it? yeah actually it looks as though it might not have been a new one i think this was one we nicked from the what was in the wbc uh, last oh, week yeah yeah it's a is it a, it's, it have they cleaned it up it's a lot cleaner there. There's a lot of brood in the middle. Uh, there's nectar in the top corners. There's pollen. Um, obviously, I can't do anything about the rusty wires. That's uh, beyond the bees. The bees' capabilities. And that side is just a whole mass of pollen. Do you think these will be needing any more food? Uh, I'm just thinking. Or we another frame. Put another frame of foundation in and, and feed them again yeah. to encourage them to, to draw it out. And we've got a solid ish oh, nice. yeah. patch of sealed brood there. Mm. A few all oh, it sort of start to emerge in the middle. Um, and a similar thing on this side. Similar on that side, we've got bits of nectar or syrup around the outside at the top we've got pollen um I've seen quite a few foragers coming back with with pollen yeah, there's one there here. that's just covered in pollen all over the place uh, as well as it's as it's uh, pollen baskets what's going on that one there roger is that uh that's that i think is a dead larva 
Right. Um, little we've bit got of a bit brood. of bald brood there. Which um, is this bit here, isn't it? Yeah, which is usually a sign of wax moth caterpillar. Mm. Um, we're intending to move this lot into the WBC box at some stage. Yeah. So once they've, if we can persuade them, once they've drawn this other um, frame of foundation that we're just about to put in between two frames of brood. Uh, Hopefully they'll, they'll draw that fairly rapidly because there's going to be a lot more bees in here over the next week because there's all those these three frames with emerging brood on so mm -hmm. the population should increase well what's the word of the moment exponentially like COVID-19 <laughs> it's gone exponential doc <laughs> uh, so you know, hopefully they'll they'll draw that out. We'll help them along by sloshing a bit of syrup in there in a minute. Right, we're still smoking. Still smoking. Onto the poly smoking. And holding it diagonally. There's quite a lot of bees on the crown board. There are, yeah. So we hold it diagonally and at a slight angle from the vertical and go bang and they all fall back into the hive more or less. Another one. That's clear, is it, the other side now? Yeah, there's only a couple of hangers on. A couple there, just push them off. Go on, girls, off you go. Don't miss about. Bullied from pillar to post, and if you don't do what you're told, you get smoke blown in your eyes. It's, oh, it's just dreadful. <laughs> right, now, and this is the basically a standard national frame that we left in for them to retrieve any stores from, and they sort of more or less done that so we'll take that out now oh, it's just a few bits of pollen and stuff well that will go in the melt to me to my apiary where i have a solar wax extractor and i'll cut the cut the wax out put it in plastic bags with holes in the corners put it in the in the wax extractor and on a nice day within about half an hour most of the wax will have melted and run out of the holes into the collecting tray right mm. so we're into the hive proper now Ooh, this looks like our first frame of brood and we've got brood. a seal brood on that side again a lot of pollen um, yeah surrounded by pollen isn't it mm-hmm so that's good. So we've got plenty of protein. Several bees coming in with well laden. Yeah. See it on their wings as well. Yeah. And that side we've got, uh, oh, queen. got seal brood. We've got the queen. Yeah. Uh, there are eggs below the, the brood. That's good. Uh, yeah, so, you know. She's quite a nice size queen, isn't she? Yeah, not bad. We're quite happy one. with her. I mean, you can see the spread of the bees now, can't you, across those top bars. Yeah. Is quite a marked difference to what we had with the older queen, isn't it? Yeah. I know it was earlier in the year, but... And we did pop a frame in with some eggs on from the other one. I think it's that one of the new ones there, isn't it? From the this nuke here with the old queen next yeah. door. And the week before as well, so we've yeah. given them quite a nice. Well, I mean that's why we boost, that's why we? we kept the the old queen because although she's not big enough to run a full colony, she's doing you know, a nice job. Of I giving mean, us this this is getting on towards being a box full of bees now, which is what you know what what it should be. Yes, um, and with the old queen. Uh, we were only ever probably going to get half a box of bees and you're not going to get much honey or anything else from half a box of bees and anyway this being mostly a, a primarily a, a teaching apiary mm. there's no point showing people 
empty boxes and saying, oh, but when in the summer it'll be full of these, because it, it's just not the same as actually seeing it. No. Um, and that side we've got lots of fresh pollen being brought in and crammed in the centre of the brood. We've got brood, nice and you there, haven't we? Uh, the sort of empty ones outside the pollen and inside the sealed brood are, are very young larvae. They're just hatched eggs. Um, a little bit of drone brood up the top left, my top left there. Oh, so just, just here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but again, you know, it's, an, it's not a bad frame. It's a nice straight frame. Yeah. Mostly worker found, mostly worker cells. Got a queen cup on this bit here. I guess that's uh, just an old one, yeah, isn't it? Queen, yeah, I saw that. And I did see that. I just hadn't bothered to look at it. Uh, again, it's a... Uh, Is it just empty? It's empty. It's not polished or anything. You won't worry about that. And uh, right, so that can go back in. Engaging the sidebars so we don't squash a lot of bees. Mm. And then gently putting it down so we don't catch them under the lugs either. But as you get more bees and they're more on the top bars, um, the chances of catching the chance of catching a, a couple are increased. Quite mm. a lot. Um, you know, it's easy to throw them about when there's no bees on them because there's no risk. But uh, yeah, as they start to get properly populated, as this is beginning to do, uh, I feel that it's right that we'd be a bit more careful about oh, about how we handle them. Mm. Is the smoker going, Roger? Uh, yeah, just about. A little bit. <laughs> if you don't keep <laughs> pumping it, it tends to... Oh, look, there we are. tends to get a bit quiet. Yeah, it's going again. Right. Come on, you lot. Down you go. Uh, I mean, in, a, in another little while, um, we'll be tested with wasps when we're doing this so mm -hmm. at that stage I think that we perhaps get a couple of tea towels and use them for we've got our new cloths. ones haven't we all oh, right and Kerry got us okay. the ones with the bees on yeah um <laughs> just to sort of stop the bees having to having to defend themselves against wasps and mm. and me um, if they can't see me, then they're not bothered. Yeah. And we've got a lot of sealed brood. Some young brood. Some... What was it? Pollen. Larvae. What is it? Where uh, larvae glistening? Pollen. Uh, nectar. All kinds on that side. All mixed up. And on that side we've got a bigger patch of sealed brood. Um, as you see, the they've... All except for one, they've uh, more or less ignored the wires. Oh yeah, we've got uh, the pattern. It's this sort of V, V shape is the wire, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Uh, notice how much darker the cappings are on this lot than they were on the other, on the previous one because it's an older frame. Yeah. Um, they do actually recycle some of the old wax to use again, so. Where you have old frame, it'll have darker cappings, and where you have a new frame, it'll have white cappings. So do they transport it further than one frame, or do you uh, think they kind of just stick when, to... Well, if you put if you put a frame of foundation between two really black old frames of brood, um, you'll find that your foundation uh, frame is not anything like as white pristine as, as you would expect when they do draw it because they they will drag the old wax bits from the the surrounding frames yeah so uh, you know if, if possible you need to put them somewhere reason between reasonably new frames I mean it shouldn't it shouldn't be a problem because we shouldn't be using really old black frames but uh, 
So that just stores. And that's all pollen and nectar. Yeah. yeah. For those watching that have got a colony they've probably got this year that's at a similar stage to what we're looking at here and are wondering about putting a super onto it. What would you say to those people at the moment? Because we're drawing frames out, aren't we? So. Uh, well, they need that sort of. They're at using the that. moment, we're we're sort of trying to concentrate on on getting this uh, colony up to where it ought to be mm -hmm. by this stage of the year. Yeah. And not worrying too much about the honey because even I, the, the the sort of main nectar flow, I suppose, has already started. Um, so it would be these bees that we see running about here that will bring in the, the any any honey uh, surplus. Um, but we need a lot of bees just f for the colony to be able to function and manage through the winter. Um, so basically, if you were desperate, if it was your first season, you thought, "Oh, I've got to, I'd like to get some honey." Then you know, by all means, put a put a, a super on the top. Um, but it probably won't get filled. Um, it might not even all get drawn out. They'll draw probably the the centre um, frames mm. and probably fill them with with honey, but. You wouldn't, I'd, unless you're very fortunate, you would, probably wouldn't get a, a full super of, of honey from this, at this late stage, starting from this late stage. Um, so they've also got to draw the foundation out. Because they've also got to draw the foundation first. Um, get out of here, you silly girl. Come on. Uh, but, you know, it's... We all do our beekeeping differently and we all decide on our own priorities. Is that smoke or ash? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to retire to the to the background and have a look. <laughs> I think the smoker might have gone out. What tends to happen with pine cones is that they when they dry out mm. they open up like that and they don't then s drop down inside the smoker to where the fire is. Uh, so you have to actually sort of get a bit brutal about it and push them down. So there we go. I give in. <laughs> it's gone out. It's as nearly out as makes no difference. So I'm going to tip it all out on this sheet of newspaper which will then catch fire. Catch fire, go up in flames, make a big hole in my veil, <laughs> all the usual stuff. Oh, come on, don't mess about. There, there you go. go. Have fire. Yes, this time I'll be a bit more careful about mixing up the the fuel. Oh, the pine cones, yeah. <laughs> you didn't see me pick up those wood chips and throw them in, did you? No, nope. no, nope. not at all. Actually, the ba <laughs> your bag's in the way, so you <laughs> now you mentioned it. Oh, that's all right. Then. <laughs> it does help if you can get the top on straight, because otherwise it tends to suddenly flop off and open up when you've got it over the beehive. And and that's not clever. You throw a load of smouldering fuel into your, into your beehive, which is uh, considered seriously not quite you. <laughs> ah, that's in the you and non-you, which the older members of our congregation will understand. This is the nuke which has the queen from this polyhive, uh, who was producing not a huge number of bees 
But they were really friendly. But they were really friendly and amiable and amenable to being looked at. Yeah. So we're keeping her for now. So that when they've done things like this, where they've drawn out this uh, frame of foundation a week, we can steal it and put it into that one if we want to. Yep. Which I think we probably will do. But we can anyway, do the same so. with the frames with the eggs as we've been doing. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's best if they're actually sealed or on the point of sealing because those ones won't be taking resources from the, the hive you put them into. And uh, obviously always bearing in mind that you don't want to be moving disease from one hive to another. No. But uh, yeah, if you move sealed brood, then it's going to be a rapid reinforcement of the of the colony that receives it, and it's not going to take any resources because they've already been fed and sealed in. So that's a very good point. They only need to be kept slightly warm, and they'll emerge on their own. And uh, yeah, basically that's doing all the things you want it to. It's good. It is good, isn't it? I told you there was a plan. There was a plan, yeah. I don't think there's going to be a great need to feed these again this week. Um, maybe if we... Because what we're trying to do is get as many new frames into these other... into these full-size colonies as we can. So there's no yeah. point moving old frames from one box to another but um, when we can you know we, we can move new new wax and new frames with uh, sealed brood that's a better way to go so I mean if we steal if next week we steal that new frame out of there and replace it with foundation then maybe we'll give them a, a couple of liters of syrup next week after we put the foundation in to hurry them up with, uh, with drawing that out yeah, but at the moment there's not really a lot of point doing that because uh, they haven't got an awful lot to do with it really. And now it's this one. Yep. With two supers and a deep brood chamber. Oh, these are busy, aren't they? Yep. Look at that. Right, so way of the time. So, yes, um one, um, two, um. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <coughs> so eleven is the full complement with a dummy board. Yep. So you can put twelve in, providing they're the self the Hoffman sidebars. Um if you use plastic spacers, then you only get 11. Mm. Whatever you do, because they're wider. So you'd only use those on the non-cell spacing frames, wouldn't you? Yeah. You're not worried about the queen cells? No, I'm not going to bother about them. Theoretically... Mm. Theoretically... They don't swarm when there's a honey when there's a nectar flow on. Oh really? They're too busy. They're too busy collecting food, but you know, it doesn't it wasn't true of this lot last year. Oh well, no, year. that's true. Um, they just swarm whatever big, whatever state they were in. Big queen right. cell on this um, side. Oh that's a sealed queen cell, that's not good. No, that's not good, is it? Yeah, that's a nuisance. Right, well, we'll put that one to one side. Yeah, just in case, because if the queen's gone, we don't want to kill the uh, chance of getting a new one. So we're also now trying to see if there's evidence of the queen as well, aren't we? Yeah, we've got to find the queen. I don't know. Um, let's 
still seem to be quite a lot of bees in here. Yeah, I wouldn't have said they've but swarmed. I'm not seeing a whole lot of young bees. No. And uh, We didn't see her last week, did we? No, I don't think so. Um, we've seen very few eggs, but we, as I said, we, we haven't seen many young bees, which is... They're the ones that make up quite a high proportion of, of a swarm, apparently. Oh. Contrary to a previous thing. Yeah, because you'd think the older experienced ones would, wouldn't you? But Well, that's get... always been the, the, the logic, but apparently mm. it's just wrong because, um, you know, I mean, I always said, well, if, it, if it's the young bees that, are, that draw wax... Um, then you know a swarm is is wrong basically because it hasn't got the wherewithal to quickly mm. draw wax. But they've now somebody actually done a count. Um, it was in the in the bee craft earlier this year, I think, and they decided that now that um, actually most of the bees that go with the swarm are the younger ones, the sort of ad adolescents. Um, so they're just at the point of flying and so foraging. Uh, just in, at the first sort of point of flying when they've, you know, in the first three weeks of life. So, you know, they're all furry and able to keep warm and they're also at the top rates for wax, oh, wax here, making. Okay. Queen's here, mm. right, okay, that's all right then. Just in there? Oh yeah, there she is. What hugely fat is she? She's not, no. I think they I think they've been slimming her down. They're getting her ready. Getting her ready to fly. Ah, right, okay. Well in that case. I think we do away with that queen cell. Does this mean we need to check the other queen cells that were in the cups? Look further uh, down. I think maybe we do. They were in that one, weren't they? Somewhere like that. Right, well, we'll have a look in a minute. Right, we'll carry on with this. The little blighters. Stuff. It's a new frame. Another new frame with several queen cells on it. Oh, gold, yeah. Still open. And they're in the middle, aren't they? Is yep. that oh, one, two, three, five? I'm going to destroy all these queen cells because we know the queen is still there. Um, we don't want to do any artificial swarms or any of that nonsense because we've got enough colonies without. Um, and uh, if if they do swarm and we, or we lose the queen or whatever, um, we've got better bees to replace them with immediately. Mm. Yeah, that's um, true. I mean, you know, we could put that whole nuke in here and, and uh, we'd have a better queen than, and better behaved bees than we've got in here at the moment. Yeah, I don't know, this one... This one wasn't a, a rip-roaring success, as I say, it was one of the... We, we took the old queen out because the bees were very nervy and uh, and they appeared to be quite swarmy. So, you know, they just kept producing queen cell after queen cell um, on very little brood, so we persuaded them to make a new queen, but. It rather looks as though she might have mated with the wrong drones. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, although it's better in that we've now got, you know, basically a box full of bees, I think, um, mm. we still don't want them swarming a couple of months after the queen was produced. They're all sitting on the frames at the front of the hive waiting to go. Look, look at this lot. Standing on each other's shoulders. And there's another queen cell. There's a couple of queen cells here. Um, 
I think I'm surprised at if they, if they are about to swarm. There aren't many drones in here so far. Well, they might be on the front, on the front step waiting to to go. Mm. I mean, I don't understand, don't really see why it is, but even a prime swarm, um, when they're collecting out the front of the hive and above it, there's a huge number of drones in the in the congregation. Mm. Um, and if it's a prime swarm, they don't really need drones because they've already got a mated queen. Yeah, that's true. So drones are kind of superfluous, but they're the ones that make all the, all the row, or well, most of the row. Mm. Um, and it's one of the reasons you can hear when they're about to swarm, because the drones come out and start flying figures of eight and, and uh, spirals outside the hive and getting everyone excited. And uh, you hear this quite a deep roar from the the thing as they as they build up the numbers. Um, I mean, I can see why a cast would take a lot of drones with it, but I, I really don't understand why a, a prime swarm would. But there you go, they do. Mm. Well, they're part of the certainly a big part of the preparation. Whether they actually go with the swarm or not, I'm not really sure. But uh, they do make a lot of noise when the when the swarm is collecting. That was the one that had with the queen cell on it. Mm -hmm. There it is. So, well, I did. I said it was sealed, but there's still a tiny little hole in the capping just there. I think. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, so that one's going. We're not playing that game today, ladies. So that was quite a close call, really, isn't it? Because mm. if we checked another, what left them another day? Well, I think they've probably gone today or tomorrow at the very latest because, you know, with that one sealed already, or nearly sealed already, and the others um, pretty close to sealing and and the, the weather that we, we've got now rather than, I suppose, the weather as it was yesterday and the day before, mm. uh, just shows how you need to keep up with your inspections. Oh, they've built on it, this haven't is they? where you... Oh, yeah. Got to be careful, haven't you? Got to be careful. Oh, look what they're up to, Roger. Hmm. <laughs> Oops, they are. They're having a great time. Yep. Becoming artistic. Yeah. Yeah, this is what happens when you don't put the full complement of frames in. Yeah, this one needs another frame in it. And if they're doing this, then they're indicating that they're quite happy to draw wax. So yeah, be as well to give them some. Otherwise, they'll continue. Just carry on messing about, which we don't really need because it's kind of messy and you take chances when you scrape it off the side because. Uh, it's quite hard not to dig old in the polystyrene. So where this is bulging out in this top corner, let's persuade that one to move. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run the flats of the hive tool over that, like that, and crush it. Not utterly not right back to the foundation just enough so that it's basically bruised and then I wipe the excess honey back into the box and then I can push that up against the side like that and if they want to get to that bit they've got to eat the comb away to do it so it will fit properly next time. As you can see they started at right angles to the wall and then they've converted to parallel oh, yeah. on these two first bits at the back here and on that those two bits at the front they haven't actually turned it round yet but no doubt they would do if I left it 
They do like to utilise any space that they have. Mm. Those have got a bit of nectar in. That's all in those one, that one. But this is what happens when you don't put the right number of frames in and, and you're, you have an expanding colony of bees. Um, they do tend to romp ahead of you. And then you have to come back and do remedials. Mm, On the subject of, of, of wax, um, those of you that want to make candles or, or cosmetics or any other sort of beeswax containing product, if you can persuade them to draw drone comb one season, put it back in the next season, they will thicken it up considerably. They'll put twice as much wax, they'll put the same amount of wax in again. Oh wow. Um, so you then melt it down and you get a double dollop of wax because um, they seem to be a bit reluctant to reuse old drone comb for practically anything really, in my experience. Um, I mean, there are people that have only drone comb in their supers because it makes extracting easier um, and they say it's perfectly successful but in my experience they tend to uh, particularly early in the season they reline the drone cells and they see the whole thing gets very mm. sort of thick and heavy with wax rather than uh, just the standard um, sort of cell thickness cell size and thickness um, the other way of course is to have a new queen and put a put drone foundation in that and then because they don't want to draw drone f cells on or they put that foundation in um, they then get very creative and try and convert the drone foundation to worker cells and they tend to wind up with a a, a frame of uh, well on some occasions sort of uh, small triangular cells <laughs> <laughs> that are neither one nor the other and in other situations they just ignore it completely or eat it away or what I don't know you know but they don't uh, you know it's if they really don't want to do stuff then uh, they will steadfastly not do it <laughs> Or are you going to nick one out of the WBC? Uh, were there any left in there? I think so. They were getting a bit worm-eaten, if I remember rightly. Yeah, a bit wax moffy, weren't they? Yeah. And slugger, slugger flicked. There's a greater wax moth, look. Where's the, where's the camera? Oh, look, yeah. That's your greater wax moth. Oh, missed him. Where's he gone? Oh, missed it. And these are the tunnels, and the frass, and that's where they pupated. There he is, or she is, rather. And there she is, dead after an encounter with somebody's index finger. <laughs> right, OK. Um, well, I suppose if you must, let's put a mangy old frame in from, from the B room. <gasps> We just have for lovely now. bee frames in the bee room, Roger. <laughs> oh, wasp mithered and... Not at all. Fermenting and... <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> they might be fermenting. <laughs> oh, if the worst came to the worst, we could put this one in. Just actually, for that's now. point. Yeah, could do. And it's actually got something useful in it still. Should we do that? Yeah. And they'll probably build from the bottom. Came from the bottom, but that won't matter because uh, it's coming out anyway. It's coming out anyway. Gives them something to play with, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. There was a useful amount of pollen in that frame, but mm. yeah, I mean now that we see it with another frame next to it, there's actually a bee space along there. Now that there's not the it's not busted against the side of the box. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. 
Yeah, I can get in there now. Come on, girls, let go. Right, now I've got to try and persuade them all to get off the top bars. They all seem to be doing more or less what we want them to, um, apart from producing queen cells on that particular one oh, yeah. colony. Um, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, but yeah, it all seems to be going pretty well, really. That's good, they're building up nicely, aren't they're they? They're building up. Um, you know, we'll soon be in a situation, well, I mean, we could do it if we combined uh, the contents of two newts, we could get the WBC up and stocked and running straight away if we wanted to. Um, but other than that, yeah, we're fine. And maybe we do that next week. Maybe yeah. we'll just go berserk and do something crazy. Do something wild. <laughs> oh. So we'll see everybody next week then. So we'll see everyone next week. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy what we do here at Mantle Farm. Don't forget to like and subscribe and to keep up to date with our latest videos here on YouTube.